It is great to see you got a That Metal shirt show shirt on. What a great show <laughs> that was. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yes, yes, yes. Jeff, it is great to have you back on here. I'm feeling a, a little sense of like, I don't know, the, the universe sort of coming back into, into, into motion because you were one of our first guests back in 2013. Here it is 10 years later. Huh. Foreigners on its uh, farewell tour here. And I uh, just saw you guys last week in St. Louis, by the way, which was outstanding. Oh, two weeks well, ago. Cool. Yeah, cool, two weeks cool, ago. Cool. 20,000 yeah. people yeah. selling out the Hollywood Casino Amphitheater in St. Louis. Yeah. Yeah, I know it's it's we we've been blown away at the at the crowds. I mean, it's it's been crazy. It really has. It's exploded. It's amazing. Well, we got to start with how you're doing because obviously you've been dealing with some uh, some some back issues here on this yes. tour. How's it been going? How hard has it been to sort of get through this? What what's been what's it been like for you, Jeff? Well, I mean, it is it it is a challenge. I mean. What's probably the most difficult, I mean, yes, I'm in pain. It's generally not too bad a pain when I'm on stage um, because I'm seated. But, you know, when I'm standing and walking, I'm in pain still. So that's that's a problem. Um, but the the challenge really has been psychological because I want to rock so bad. <laughs> and I have to sit there in a chair, which, you know, thank, thank God we've got a, an amazing band. And I, you know, I, I can just sit there and groove with Chris, our drummer, and it's wonderful. Um, but, but, you know, there's that, the performer in me is, is just dying because I want to get out there and rock. And we got this beautiful set going. We got this great production and everything. I want to be part of it so bad and I can't. So that's frustrating. But I also get this bird's eye view of the show and I see what's going on and I, I kind of don't miss me. So, <laughs> so that's great. Lots of stuff going on. The show has been great. The audience has been fantastic. We do the acoustic portion of the show, which really excites me. So um, a lot of, I mean, as challenging as it's been because of the back and it looks like I'm probably going to be stuck like this until I get surgery. So, mm -hmm. um, uh, you know, there, that's unfortunate. But at least I got this great band to play with and these great shows to do. And when I'm up there, I'm having the time of my life. So that's that's what really counts. Well, you've sort of joined rock royalty. You think about Axl Rose that has done uh, the seated with the broken foot, Dave Grohl with the broken ankle. You're sort of joined. There's sort of a badge of honor that comes with that, that you power through these things. I think that maybe this could this really could become sort of a legendary situation as years go by. Yeah, I mean, I, I think we even tried to find, see if we could locate Dave Grohl's chair and it wasn't able to be found. <laughs> I think it's the same chair as Axel's. It's like they you think he borrowed it. Was. It. <laughs> it was, you know. <laughs> but it doesn't, the show, it doesn't take away. I mean, I know how you are and I know how energetic you are and and, and things like that, but I don't, I don't think it takes away anything. You don't look back and go like, what's going on here? The way it's done, it's it, 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 it doesn't detract. And I think that that is very important and the show is, well, Jeff, they're as good as it's ever been. That's what kind of makes me sad about this being the farewell tour for Foreigner because I feel like you guys completely rebuilt this brand. And mm -hmm. I think back to 2007, you guys were opening for Def Leppard and, and Sticks, And I didn't really know what was going on with Foreigner. I'm like, okay, who's in the band? Okay, this guy is a great singer. Jeff Pilsen's here on my... But all yeah. of a sudden, here you guys really rebuilt the, the brand to the point now where you're headlining, like I said, 20,000 seats. So there's kind of bittersweet for the fans and probably for you guys as well. Yeah, uh, you're exactly right. It is very bittersweet uh, because we are firing on all cylinders right now. Yes. We really are as 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 strong as ever. Um, so yeah, that's it's hard to leave that. Um, but uh, uh, at the same token, uh, because we are firing on all cylinders, we know that we're going out strong, and that's important, um, especially for Kelly, who you know, it for him, it's it's a lot about him and and his situation because. Singing these songs is not easy. And, you know, he has to work, you know, he has to give up more and more every year in order to pull these songs off the way they deserve. And that's been tough for him. So I, I get it. And he does not want to go out there and suck. And I, I say more power to that. I, I think more artists need that kind of integrity, to be honest with you. There is an integrity to it. This band is great. Kelly Hansen, one of the best singers in rock. He could never suck. There's not a there's not a universe or an ailment that could ever put Kelly into such a category. But I totally get it because he's so high energy and the show is great. What's and and remember for him, 
sucking is different than you and him, I may listen to That's him. True. And say, he sounds great. And in his mind, he's thinking, um, you know, so remember it's his standard is, is very, very high. And, that's why he's great. <laughs> yeah, you're absolutely right. And you guys are out there with Loverboy, who I absolutely love this band. I brought my a friend of mine who's kind of just a, a casual fan of music from the era from the era. And he he walked away and he goes, I knew every single song all night. And that that Loverboy, I think is a testament to this. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, listen, people don't rem- don't realize how many Loverboy songs they know. Exactly. Kind of the same with Foreigner, to be honest with you. You don't realize how many Foreigner songs you know until you see the band. Uh, Loverboy are great. They've always been great. I've known these guys almost 40 years. Um, they are just a phenomenal band. Uh, they sing and play and perform as great as ever. Uh, I, I can't think of anybody better to open up the show. Um, and, and they're, they're great guys. So it's, it's, it's really a fun tour for us. It really is. It, it, I, I'm just so, I don't know, enamored and so excited for this band because I feel like I go, way back with you guys and uh, way back with you at the Missouri state fair back in 2013. And that's just kind of been it. You guys, like I said, started with opening for, for sticks and and for Def Leppard, getting the name back out there. And Oh my gosh, these guys, we know these songs. This is tremendous. And then, Oh, Jeff Pilsen's in this band. Oh my gosh, Kelly Hansen, what a great singer. And it just seemed like it. You guys just slowly got your way almost back to the top as a major headlining act. That is almost unprecedented in rock history when you think about yeah, it. it. I mean, it, it is isn't. it is a phenomenal achievement and we recognize how lucky we are for that. I mean, it, yes, it was done through hard work and, and many years of hard work. So it doesn't feel quick to us. Um, but, but at the same time, we realize how special it is. And, um, you know, we're just, we're grateful. And that's all the more reason why we want to give it 150% and never go out there and, and do anything less than what we feel is our best. I really hope that because I'm a huge fan of of the of the songs and of keeping music alive, that maybe there could be a formula here for, for bands going forward and to be able to keep the brand alive and keep it out there and find a way to do that. I know you guys have worked closely with Mick Jones, who's the founding member of Warner, amazing guitarist. What's he think about all this, about kind of the, uh, the end coming to, to a near bittersweet for him too. Yeah. I mean, yeah. He's, I mean, uh, again, it, it's, it's, it's really no different than our feeling, which is we love it. We all love each other. We're going to miss each other. There's all these various factors that make us want to be together, but then there's the very honest realization that we can't do it forever. So let's go out while we're on top. And I think Mick endorses that thoroughly. Well, Jeff, for you, one of the busier guys in rock, this will maybe allow for some more time for some great projects. And you have some coming up, including Heavy Hitters 2 with with George. Uh, I'm so excited when you guys do this because you never know what songs you guys are going to pull out of the hat, like Radioactive on this one. Yeah, it's really fun. It's really fun. There's some wilds. I mean, we do Carry On by Crosby, Stills, and Nash. Right. And we, we do it like a heavy rock shuffle. It's amazing. <laughs> it's, it's so <laughs> much. This, this record is so much fun. Uh, and, you know, Brian, the drummer, Brian Tishy, is just a phenomenal. Yes. And it's so much fun playing with him. Uh, and then Bernard Fowler just came in and nailed the stuff. I mean, he really, really delivered. So, what a, oh, and then we have Corey Glover singing a song, which is really cool. And, and um, I'll, the label didn't know about that until kind of towards the end. So that didn't get the publicity it should have. But but yeah, Corey, Corey sings a song, too. So it's 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 a fun rocking record. And I'm just excited for it. I how do you guys pick these songs? Because we got you got everything from Sledgehammer to The Stroke. So, like I said, radioactive by Imagine Dragons. Like, how do you put together the, uh, this kind of a song list like this? Well, at the start of the project, you know, so you know, we've done two of these now. Uh, at the start of the project, the record company sends us a list of their songs that they would love to see us do, and then George and I sit down and do a list. And Brian, and in this case, I think Brian was pretty heavily involved. Mm-hmm. We just make a list, and then we just George and I just get together and we just kind of like okay let's try this one today and you know we just kind of go one and if it works it works if if we you know if we don't get very far like there was a couple songs we tried and we didn't get very far we we're like yeah let's move on so um basically that's how we did it just process of elimination 
it's going to be hard to top because on the first heavy hitters, you did Ordinary World by Duran Duran. That's one right. of my favorite covers of a song that I've right. ever heard. I, I love that song. And that's and that was such a great yeah. cover. So that's oh, that's the yeah. bar here. OK, well, I think um, check it out. Just like I said, <laughs> wait, wait, wait till you hear our version of Sledgehammer. It's really cool. <laughs> that's one of my favorite. That's going to be great because I'm a huge yeah. fan of uh, that, Peter that's Gabriel. How the it's 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 pretty scary it's cool. and i've heard the radioactive oh i just like there's something about you and george what is it about the chemistry there because whether you're doing lynch pilsen tnn or well, whatever you guys do there's just a chemistry there or is it a personal thing are you guys close or is it just sort of more of a musical we connection we we are close but um but honestly it's it's been a musical thing from day one i mean hmm. The first day George ever came over to my house, and this would have been the summer of 1983, um, he literally walked in the door. I think he was coming to pick me up and we were going to go somewhere or whatever. Anyway, he walked in the door. He saw my guitar sitting there. He picked it up. He started playing and we wrote a song. The first day we ever got together. I mean, it's just it's like that with us. We always have had this musical chemistry. I mean, we kind of. You know, it's like we both become teenagers again when we start working. And it's and and you know, we're we're those 15-year-old kids that wanted to rock out and play rock music. And you know, that's what we've become. And it's it's an energy that's infectious and it creates this music. And I know I've I've come to just really appreciate it and love it over the years. And you know, like I say, he's my musical soulmate. <laughs> well, not to be one of those greedy fans, but but might there be more collaborations coming up? Well, with I mean, we have we have we have finished uh, recording another end machine record. It's being it's going to be mixed soon. I think it's coming out early next year, but it's a phenomenal new end machine record. Um, we have a singer on it by the name of Garish Pradhan, who's who lives in India, who is phenomenal. You can hear him on Joel Holkstra's uh, 13. 13. He just uh, on whatever on Joel's newest record. Garish is the singer. He's a phenomenal singer and great writer. And um, wait till you hear this record. It is absolutely astounding. Uh, like I say, it's coming out, um, I believe, early next year. But I, it's going to blow people's minds. It's really great. Well, now that we've gone down that the rabbit hole of these the Frontiers type releases, you, uh, speaking of Joel, you stepped in to do Revolution Saints with Dean Castronovo and Joel. And I yes. love that album. Uh, Jack Blades that originally was playing uh, right. playing bass, of course. That Revolution Saints album is great. And that band is tremendous. It's like all these groups are out there floating around. And of course, Black Swan, you do so many. And it's just like, I want them all to like exist in their own universes and be able to like tour yeah. and exist individually. But obviously that's not pragmatic and possible. But that Revolution Saints album is just tremendous. Thank you. Thank you. And and we have another one in the can and we're all, we're <laughs> starting to write another one this summer. So, uh, yeah, there's there's plenty more Revolution Saints music coming. I, I mean, it's, I what, what can you say? Dean's voice is just so phenomenal. I, I told him I had we had him on a couple months ago, right during the journey uh, run here in the spring. A lot of people don't realize how important he is to journeys, backing vocals and how he is as a lead singer and how hard it is sometimes to take that leap of faith into believing in yourself to be able to do that for now, especially when you got Jack blades who had been in revolution saints, who's a great singer of obviously. And he took that on. And he's phenomenal. Yeah. I, yeah. Well, it, listen, Dean is very humble about his singing. Um, but man, the guy's a monster. And, and I, I mean, I think he's going to be a serious contender as a singer. So, I mean, I, Ooh. I just look forward to like, there's, there's some great stuff coming. Great stuff. Well, I brought up Black Swan. I'm just bringing that up as well. Generation Mind came out a year ago. Like I think it was today, actually, weirdly. I think it was a year ago today, uh, believe it or not. Robin McCauley, speaking of great vocalists. Mm. Oh, my gosh. Reb Beach, Matt Starr. You guys yeah. did that last album. Uh, so I'm assuming you'll just say, oh, there's another Black Swan album in the can, and that comes out in 2024. Well, it's not in the can, <laughs> but, uh, but we do have plans to start writing it in January. So um, there will be. I would imagine the Black Swan record is going to be early 2025. Um, so we're because we're going to start writing it in 20 early 24. So I, I can't get enough of these these frontiers releases. It's like all my favorite bands and member and influences all kind of come together and collide. Yeah, yeah. It's an explosion, and I can't get enough. So yes. 
incest at its best. <laughs> That's what it is. It's incestual. And it's, what's it like for you? Is it, is it hard to like, what's the, the process like for you as far as you're in, you, you do this one and you move on and you got other writers, you got other collaborators. Is it hard? Is it like cross contaminating? Is it hard to keep track of what's going on? Like what? sometimes, but generally, generally I'm kind of concentrating on one at a time. Um, I mean, I'm generally doing it within the confines of being on the road with foreigner as well. So that's tricky. Um, but generally I'm working on one project, you know, for a while and I can kind of get under the hood on that one. Um, there's times when I, you know, like, like I did some writing for the revolution saints while I was, you know, working on the recording of the M machine record. So there's a little bit things like that. So yeah, it can be a bit of a challenge keeping them all in their place, but I'm pretty good at that. And um, like I say, because I get to concentrate pretty much on one at a time, it's it's not it's not that difficult. Well, I speak for many people when I say keep them coming because uh, it is really, I think it's such an important cog in the rock and roll fabric of today. Frontiers does such a great job and is so uh, emblematic of the rock scene, especially from a lot of the bands and musicians that so many of us grew up on. So that's an the frontiers is really killing it when it comes to this content yeah. and you don't get they're, it anywhere else like that. Yeah. They're, they're kind of the, the, the big game in town and it, you know, it's because they believe in it and they truly are passionate about this kind of music. So um, what a great thing that to have that outlet there. It's amazing. Well, do you guys uh, in foreigner have sort of a, an, an, an end game in mind, a, a final slew of dates, or is it kind of just, oh. We'll see. Not yet. Not yet. Um, we because we know it's going well into twenty four. Um, we're not really sure of an absolute end date yet. That has to be determined. Um, I think we're keeping our minds open because you know we want to get to as many places as we've been as we can. Yeah. You know, wanna, we we'd love to get cover everywhere. Um, that's going to be difficult. Uh, so we'll see what we come up with. There is no final end date yet no game plan for that um just that we're on our way out and <laughs> and that it's going to go well into 24 perhaps longer we'll see well if my geography and math and calendar skills are correct you're in new york today so you're on a bit about east coast run here which mm -hmm. uh should be great i mean the east coast has so, always been important for foreigner all the new all through new york massachusetts you guys are covering a lot of places already in this tour so getting a lot of the notches off the belt already here. Yeah. Well, I guess we're, we're a couple of weeks into this, but yeah, yeah we, got, we got a lot more to go and, and, and it's rocking. So time to go. I can't tell you enough how, how proud I am of, of, of the band, of, of you guys, the, the musicians in it and how important those songs are. It's funny. There's a, uh, I don't know if you like if you um, like sports that much, but uh, there's a former Mizzou basketball coach, college basketball coach here in Missouri. That I see him at every foreigner concert I've been to for the last ten years. Every single time I see him at every one, there hasn't been one where I haven't seen him. It's almost like a thing. Like Coach Ooh. Kim Anderson, he, he played at Mizzou, coached at Mizzou, and he's kind of a legendary figure in these in these parts. I see him at every foreigner concert. He or his favorite band. Oh well, that's cool. We had Coach Sam Pittman uh, of the Arkansas Razorbacks. What? Yeah, he came he came on stage during Hot Blooded at our show in Arkansas a couple of weeks ago. How did I miss this? I just it's it's funny you say that because uh we interviewed Sam Pittman at SEC Media Days in Nashville uh two weeks ago, and it was on our way back to Kansas City that we stopped in St. Louis to see you guys. And so oh, wow. we That's just had interviewed Sam Pittman the day that, oh, well, that morning. Is too, that is too <laughs> funny. Yeah, well, it, I, I happen to remember it was July 14th. <laughs> so, so yeah, I think it was uh, July. 18th or 19th that we did that. So yeah, it was just a few days later. I if, if I'd have known that, I could have asked him about that during the interview. He so loved it. He wow. Loved it. <laughs> he doesn't strike you, you, you Sam Pittman, it's not someone that you would look at and be like, that guy's probably a foreigner fan, but hey, everyone is because that music is so far reaching, it, it touches yeah. everyone. Yeah, you know, everyone from seven to seventy, you know. <laughs> and for me, Jeff, as a big fan of the movie Footloose, you get like 20% of the Footloose soundtrack if you go see this tour because you got uh, Loverboy playing their song from Footloose on a lot of nights and you guys, of course, waiting. Uh, I've been waiting for a girl like you. That was in Footloose? Yes. 
I didn't know that. You, really? <laughs> I did not know Major that. scene. Yes, it is in I Footloose. Oh, that. Waiting for a girl like you was in Footloose. I had no clue. <laughs> Along with uh, Heaven in Your Eyes. Uh, no, that, that's the Top Gun song that they do. But they uh, the, the duet that uh, Mike Greener does with Ann Wilson, Almost Paradise with Ann yeah, Wilson, that's in Footloose. Yeah, he has done that. I, they did that uh, because I think it's Mike's wife or something. Somebody, yeah, I think. It's oh, Mike. that comes out and does the sh with him. Yes, yeah, that, that does the song with him. Yeah, yeah, yes, yeah, it's, it's great. So you were today years old when you realized that song's in the on in the footloose. You got to watch the movie now. Uh, yeah, yeah, well, something I never <laughs> probably did, but <laughs> <laughs> that that uh, I'm not going to hold against you. I am a big fan of it. It's one of those nostalgic things. Like I grew up with. Like I had like babysitters, uh, you know, female babysitters making me watch it, and so now I uh, it's just part of my part of my fabric. So you get the, the soundtracks on display during this tour, which is important. Gotcha. Okay. Uh, so do you feel like that uh, there's a part of you that like when, because the foreigner tour schedule has been so demanding over the past 15 years that you have more time for more projects. You do a lot of producing. Do you, is there a part of you that feels like, okay, great. There is a opening now that I, I can fit in other things, things that you wanted to do, things like that. Yeah. Yeah, of course. Of course. That's a, yeah, I mean, that's something I plan to do. I mean, I will enjoy touring less. I will definitely enjoy that. Um, and yes, th then that gives me more time to record because I love recording. So as much of that I can do, the better. And yeah, I plan on doing a lot of it. Would you uh, perhaps do s some more talking shows here and there? I mean, I'm not opposed to it. I mean, <laughs> I still talk about it, but... um. I know George has been doing shows with yep. Don. I, you know, I, I mean, I guess it's kind of like if they're doing it, though, then what's the point of me doing it, too? Uh, who knows? I, I I don't know. But um, but yeah, I'm not opposed to anything, really. Um, But like I say, Ed, I'm going to I'd like to do a lot of recording. There's even some foreigner songs kicking around that I'd love to finish off and 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 record. So we'll see. We'll see how, how that goes. It's, I can't tell you, you know, what it's been like to. To, you know, just be a part of this, to see you, all the projects that you've done and everything that and how respected you are, Jeff. Let's face it. You're, you're one of the more respected guys out there. And I know um, th that this music and these songs and what you do mean so much to you. You're a pr true pro. And I can't wait to see what's next from you. And there's always something next. So it's perfect. It works out. Thank you. Yeah, there's <laughs> going to be plenty of projects. <laughs> well, I got a question. So your wife, who I, I believe is like heavily involved, like is, is he like heavily involved in like fitness and, and yoga and things like that. What has she been telling you? Is, is there, is, do you go, does she kind of help you out when it comes to this injury? Oh, oh, sure. Sure. I mean, um, yeah, because I, you know, I was doing Pilates very religiously before, before this injury. Um, and I'm still trying, I'm trying to incorporate little parts of Pilates into my recovery workout that I'm trying to do, because I, I mean, I, I have a very limited workout that I can do, but I'm trying to do something because I need to do some kind of exercise. You know, I mean, as you can see, I'm I'm in a bed right now because I am basically unable to walk or stand. So um, anyways, yes, she's been very, very helpful. She has a lot of great ideas. Um, but her main thing is don't beat yourself up. <laughs> Was there ever a time where you considered not during the tour, getting a different bass player for this? No, no, I, I knew I I could do it seated if I had to. So for, yeah, I mean, honestly, there was one day, there was a day right before this tour started where my back was so bad that I honestly couldn't move. And that day I was freaking out because I thought, how the hell am I going to get on a plane, much less go do a show? Fortunately, um, I had some help and was able to at least get through to getting on a flight and getting out to the shows. And then I got a, a an epidural, which has helped since then. But it, yeah, there was there was only about there was one day where I was a little concerned. But but most of the time I figured I'll somehow I'll figure out a way to do this. If I have to sit down, I'll figure it out. <laughs> so the surgery, you're you're just kind of in a waiting mode on that. You're having to obviously push it off for a year and a half too. What is that going to entail? Well, no, exactly? I'm, I, I don't think that. I, I'm, I mean, if, if I see, I don't really know yet. I'm just getting right. the, I mean, I'm on the road, so it's kind of hard to get help from my doctors. Um, I just had a comp 
conference call with my doctor yesterday. So I'm going to be seeing a spinal specialist and he'll determine whether I actually need surgery or not. Maybe okay. there's other things they can do. Right. I don't really know yet. But if I need surgery, it would probably be at the end of this year. Um, and, you know, hopefully I can have a recovery time within the time that we usually sure. take off around the holidays. Well, there's a lot of people uh, cheering for you in your corner, thinking about you, knowing that you are sacrificing it all for the gift of rock, which you've done your whole career. So can't thank you enough, Jeff, for all your generosity and the times that you've done the show. And I, this certainly won't be the last time. It feels like the first time and it always does, my friend. So please, Great. best of luck out there. Have a great show tonight in New York on the rest of the East Coast. And thank you well, so thank much. Thank you, man. And thank you for all your support. You've been great. Always, my friend. Thank you so much. All right. Thank you. See ya. Bye-bye.